The last restoration project here at the Old Capitol Museum was done in 2009, primarily to repair damage from Hurricane Katrina that hit in 2005. Uh, this display uh, kind of explains what was going on here before and then also explains historic preservation in Mississippi. The way I get it, the difference between restoration and reconstruction is restoration tries to take a building back to the way it looked originally which is what they did with the old capital, and it pretty much looks that way, especially on the outside. In our next story, we're gonna visit another building that's been restored, and this is the African American History Museum in Hattiesburg. Interestingly enough, the museum is housed in the only surviving USO building in the United States that was exclusively for African American troops, and it's on the National Register of Historic Places. And just for fun, we're gonna follow some high school students through and find out what they learned as they toured. This building opened March 22nd, 1942 as a USO for African-American servicemen during World War II. Um, of course, during World War II, the military was segregated, and that's why they had a USO specifically for African Americans. A USO is basically where soldiers go to relax. It was their home away from home. At the end of World War II, it was given to the city of Hattiesburg, and it being in the black neighborhood, it became our community center. This building fell in disrepair and it was actually on a list to be demolished. And there was a, a group of veterans that knew the significance of this building and they said, we can't let that happen. There was a partnership that was formed between that committee and the Hattiesburg Convention Commission. And so um, they decided that it would be a museum chronicling African-Americans in the military. When you go into the museum, the first quote said, there is no war fought by um, within the U.S. that African Americans did not participate in. It starts with the American Revolution and we end um, with the war on terror. There's very few people really know that the first casualty of the Revolutionary War was a black man, Christopher Attucks. He was a free slave. A lot of the stories that we have in our museum you wouldn't find in any other museum just because we do focus on some of those local Mississippians and a lot of our visitors are from Mississippi and they want to know about those in this area that helped pave the way for them and that helped break barriers. All right, when you walked in this area, since you learned about Cathay Williams, what do you notice in the center? It's a woman. They had something called the Women's Army Corps. This right here is Ruth Bailey Earl. She was a part of the Women's Army Corps, and she's a Hattiesburg native. This um, Red Ball Express took place within World War II, and one of the things that you note, you can see at this mirror image behind us, or this painting, is a series of trucks going along on a convoy, and they're transporting things. What kind of things do you think that they are transporting? Weapons, ammunition, okay? Food, okay? Water. Those are things that they need. Now, I really hope that you paid attention to everything that I just said because you all are going to have to take a, a quiz. <laughs> you all are going to do, I'm going to have students to take turns and read the questions on the screen and you all help them answer, okay? So you're going to turn right for false and turn left for true. You know your left from your right, correct? Someone read for me. Said it's true. Very good. Hit the red button for me. Thank you. Now we have General Benjamin O. Davis Jr., who was a four star general um, in the Air Force. And when they formed the Tuskegee Airmen, he was a ranking lieutenant colonel, so they placed him in charge of uh, the commander of the, ten uh, the Tuskegee Airmen. Dr. John Peeper was the president of all of Jackson State University. He was a black member of the original Mont Fort Point Marines, but they were never used in combat. 
Here again, they was they were trained for that, but still that idea of fighting for freedom and for another country and you not free per se was in the back of that mind. The Triple Nickel was a black airborne unit. They did not go to combat. Instead, they were stationed in Oregon, Washington State, and they became firefighter jumpers. We are currently standing in World War II. We're gonna go through a timeline from when we in the military went from a segregated army or military into a desegregated military. If you look on your left, you'll see a timeline of the events that took place up into the Executive Order 9981, which was how we got from desegregated to a, or segregated to a desegregated military. So you'll see that on your left. The opportunity for it to tell the story, especially to Afro-Americans, who you are and who your forebearers were, their dedication and commitment to this nation in time of war. Thanks for joining us. If you like what you see, subscribe to Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Till next time, I'll be seeing you on Mississippi Roads.